Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so now let us talk about the excretion of nitrogenous wastes. As I said, we will talk about the nitrogenous wastes separately because the nitrogenous wastes are the most harmful and at the same time, they are the means by which most of the waste products are thrown out of the body. So let us discuss about the three nitrogenous wastes. So first we will talk about ammonia. So ammonia as we all know is NH3. That is one nitrogen bonded to three hydrogen atoms. So here you can see the structure of ammonia. And that now you all know why they are called nitrogenous wastes because of the presence of this nitrogen. So it is the most toxic form of nitrogenous waste. So it should not be present in our body for a long time. Not even long time. It is as soon as possible the body should get rid of ammonia. It is generally present in aquatic animals like uh, the aquatic amphibians or the fishes. Uh, so that is why they are, these animals are known as ammonotelic and this process of excretion of ammonia is called ammonotelism. Excretion through body or gill surfaces. Now these aquatic animals generally they have gills for to survive in water. So the excretion or the removal of ammonia takes place through the gill surfaces. Now there is another characteristic of ammonia that it is highly soluble in water. Now since it is highly soluble in water, how will the animal excrete ammonia? It will excrete it along with water. So as long as you want to excrete ammonia, you also need to throw out a lot of water because ammonia is highly soluble in water. So that means it, there, you need a large amount of water to eliminate ammonia from your body. Now and also it, since it is uh, readily soluble in water, that is why it is excreted by the process of diffusion. Because water can move from region of high concentration towards low concentration very easily. So it is generally excreted in the form of ammonium ions dissolved in water. So the form in which it is excreted is ammonium ion. So in these animals or in ammonotelic animals, there is no role of kidney. So they do not have any specialized organ called kidney. So here all excretion will happen through the body surface or through the gill surface. The next nitrogenous waste is urea. So here you can look at the structure of urea where again you have two amine group. So it is lesser toxic than ammonia. When compared to ammonia, it is less toxic, not that much toxic. Terrestrial animals are generally ureotelic. That is, they excrete wastes in the form of urea. Now you might think in your mind that why is it that the terrestrial animals excrete their waste products in the form of urea and not ammonia. That is because when we talk about aquatic animals, they live in water. So they have a lot of availability of water around themselves. So they do not mind uh, excreting ammonia in the form of water. I mean dissolved in water because every time you excrete ammonia, you end up throwing water outside your body. That's because ammonia is soluble in water, right? But when you talk about the terrestrial animals, they have limited water inside their body and they are not living in water. So they do not have that much abundance of water. So they would not like to lose so much of water or they do not want to waste so much of water. They want to conserve water. So if they start excreting in the form of ammonia, then they'll also end up losing a lot of water. That is why in case of terrestrial animals, they excrete their wastes in the form of urea. So what happens to the ammonia which is produced inside the body of terrestrial animals? The ammonia also gets converted into urea. So inside the body of terrestrial animals, the ammonia is converted into urea in the liver. So that is ammonia gets converted to urea and this conversion take place in liver and then this urea is released into the blood from the blood it reaches the kidneys and kidneys are the main organs of excretion so kidneys excrete urea so that is the process that take place in case of ureotelic animals 
So examples of ureotelic animals would include most of the terrestrial animals which we see around ourselves. Examples human beings, lion, tiger, elephant, dog, cat, whatever you see. They are all ureotelic animals. So here excretion happens through kidneys. So you have specialized excretory organs called kidneys. We will talk about these organs in detail a little later. Now the third nitrogenous waste that is uric acid, this is the least toxic form. So if you look at its structure, this also has a lot of nitrogen in it and that is why this is a nitrogenous waste but it is the least toxic. Birds, insects and reptiles are uricotelic. So just remember these terms. Do not get confused with ureotelic and uricotelic. Uricotelic is uric acid. Ureotelic is urea. So generally birds, insects and reptiles like lizards, they excrete in the form of uric acid. So when an organism excrete in the form of uric acid, the water loss is minimum. So in this case, minimum water loss so since there is minimum water loss so the excretory product or the form in which it is excreted is almost a solid excreta for example in case of ureotelic for example human beings the excretion happens to, in the form of urine so urine is a liquid right so urine has water that is why it is liquid but when compared to ammonotelic the amount of water in urine is less similarly when you compare it with uricotelic there the water is so less that the excreta is solid because there is no water so it is not even fluid it is a solid and that is how it is excreted in case of birds, insects and reptiles. So these are the three important nitrogenous wastes. And nitrogenous wastes are one of the most important thing which needs to be excreted out when we talk about the excretory system. Now the question is, why is excretion needed? Now this is a very common question. Now, we, you might think that, okay, what is there to ask? Okay, excretion is for removal of harmful substances. Nobody wants harmful substances inside the body and that is why excretion is needed. But actually, it is not only, that is the primary reason, of course, and that is one reason, very true. But other than that, also, excretion serves some additional purposes as well. So, let us quickly look at the reasons why excretion is needed. First of all, to maintain the correct ionic balance in the body. So when I say the correct ionic balance, what I mean is when we talk about excretion, it is not only about the waste products, but it's, it is also about throwing out the excess water present in the body or the excess amount of ions present in the body. That is why I said, right, for example, sodium ions, potassium ions or chloride ions, they should be present in the right amount in the body. So the process actually helps to maintain the right ionic balance in the body. It also helps to maintain the correct amount of water in the body. So all the excess water is thrown out of the body by this process. Toxic level rises in body leading to diseases. Now if the toxic level rise in the body that can cause several diseases in the body. So the pro this process actually helps to remove all the toxic materials which we might have taken in by the process of ingestion while eating food. So all those toxic materials are also removed by this process. Immunity is adversely affected. So if the toxic level increases in the body, what can happen is the immunity of the body might get adversely affected. So excretion actually helps to prevent the adverse affection of the immunity. That is, the immunity of the body is maintained. So now let us see how different organisms excrete. How does the process of excretion happen in different living organisms? So let us quickly talk about the excretion in plants. How does process take place in plants? Now we all know about the process of photosynthesis, what happens? This is the process by which the leaves or the green parts of the plant prepare food for the plant and they do it with the help of carbon dioxide and water. So as a result of the process of photosynthesis, food is prepared in the form of glucose and one byproduct is oxygen. So oxygen is a waste product. 
during photosynthesis but this oxygen is utilized later by the process of respiration so when i say excretion it is like uh, the waste product was oxygen but then again oxygen was utilized for the respiration water is another waste product which is excreted through transpiration now during the process of photosynthesis the products are one is glucose one is oxygen and one is water so these are the products of the process of photosynthesis now glucose is the food for the plant so it is required oxygen is again it seems to be a waste product but then it is required for respiration so that means it is not excreted out water is another waste product so what happens to the water this water is excreted by the process of transpiration that is loss of water through stomata on the leaves so that is how water is lost now plants also excrete in the form of resins gums alkaloids like quinine so these are the different ways by which plants also excrete their waste products plants also excrete through leaves or bark which fall off later you would have actually seen that some of the leaves which uh, uh, during the season when during the fall season many leaves fall down now there are many unnecessary or waste products of the plant which are stored in those leaves and then the leaves itself fall off so that means also excretion take place through leaves or bark which fall off in some time so these are some of the ways by which excretion takes place in plants thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors Thank you once again.